In this video, we're going to talk about positive societies. First, we can ask the question, are most people around the world, generally speaking, happy? That is, if you ask the average person in any country anywhere around the world how they feel about their lives, are they going to say that they feel good at least most of the time? The answer appears to be yes. As your textbook authors state, most people around the world are at least mildly happy most of the time. But there are some caveats to this. First of all, not all cultures value happiness the same way, and some cultures are happier than others. In general, although most people tend to be feeling happy most of the time, there is no such thing as a utopian culture where people are happy all the time or where all people are very happy. But so far, we haven't defined culture yet. So what exactly is culture? Your textbook authors offer a working definition that I think is useful. Culture is a set of shared beliefs, attitudes, self-definitions, and values. Researchers analyzing the psychological dimensions of culture tend to examine how people relate to one another, how they understand themselves, their words, and the things they hold most dear. When thinking about culture, a lot of people's minds turned to the dimension of individualism and collectivism. But what is that exactly, and how does it matter for well-being? Collectivism is the degree to which people conceptualize themselves as part of a larger social whole. In individualistic societies, people conceptualize themselves as having traits that are specific to them. But in collectivist societies, people define themselves in terms of their social relationships. So does this matter for well-being? There's an example of a woman in South India that's articulated in your textbook who told one of the textbook authors that she refused to give him a direct report of her own happiness. If my sons are happy, she said, then I'm happy. When he pressed her to tell him how she felt at that exact moment, she replied, you should go ask my husband how he feels right now, and then you will know how I feel. Now, that's not to say that people in individualistic societies don't derive well-being from their relationships. They certainly do. But their group affiliations tend to be contingent on their own happiness. Individualists like to be part of a group so long as the group is successful. People in individualistic cultures, for instance, will wear school sweatshirts and hats when their varsity team wins, but much less so when their team loses. Cultures also tend to vary in terms of their preferred emotional states and how to express them. For instance, in Western cultures that tend to be more individualistic, there's more emphasis on taking credit for accomplishment, being prideful or boastful. This is less so in other cultures that are more collectivistic. In addition, those in Christian majority societies tend to prioritize high arousal positive emotions like joy, whereas Buddhist cultures emphasize low arousal positive emotions like calmness and serenity. Lastly, there's the question of how we base our decisions and choices. Do we base them on what will make us feel good? Or do we have other considerations like responsibilities and duties? Your textbook authors note that people in East Asian cultures tend to forego happiness in exchange for other values like mastery. In North American culture, by contrast, people tend to prioritize more immediate happiness, even if they don't master a task or activity.